MacBook Pro. <coughs> it's a 16 inches and um, it says it's uh, no power. We are not sure what was the state of the device and uh, for that reason we are not going to um, plug um, power to it. Until we can establish uh, what state the device is in, only then are we going to plug power to it. Uh, the idea is we do not want to exacerbate or we do not want to uh, uh, create more damage on the board uh, by having to send a higher voltage on, on a short, on, on a line that's, that, that, that has a short and then thereby causing uh, more damage uh, to the device. So we're not going to connect power to it. Uh, we can we do we we confirm that it's a no power and then by the way also um, the T2 devices they have a standby function uh, whereby by lifting the lead um, the device should start but only if you have if, if you have a charged battery or you have a, a connected uh, a source of power okay so um, this and again uh, most of the devices that we get for repairs they come from uh, um, a repair company so they have in-house assessments that they do and uh, the device will not uh, they it basically has to go through assessment before it gets to our desk okay so that said uh, this is a no power and then we are not going to connect power to it until we determine what what, what is uh, happening inside so first and first we're going to need a pentadol screwdriver take out the six screws if this is the first time you're doing this, uh, you want to take note of uh, the screws. They are not all of the same sizes. There are two set of screws on this machine. You have four, one, four, four, uh, one set of four and a set of two. Set of four are all of the same sizes and the set of two are of the same sizes. Set of two are longer than the set of four. So. Okay, the devices are quite uh, dusty. Okay, so first thing first, uh, with the uh, E2141s, uh, um, it follows the, the, the design of the Apple battery dual connection system. Um, so it follows the lines of the Apple, uh, Apple designs where they have a, a dual battery connection system in place. So I'm first gonna remove the battery cover, which is that, and then uh, the, the battery is connected to your board uh, via two medium. So the first one, it's uh, the, the battery cable, this guy here. Mm -hmm. So that, it's number one. This is one, and the other one is this one here. So you see this, this flap that comes from the board onto the battery uh, mini board, that is it. And so this is the main battery power line. That's about 12 point something volt, uh, 11 point something or 12 point something, depending on what it, it, it depends. Now this is a, a, a lower voltage line, about about uh, three point something volt, or sometimes a two point something volt. It's, this is this is a data line. With the cable disconnected, effectively you have successfully disconnected uh, power running from the battery to the board. But that will only be the case of uh, an Apple original battery, not a generic battery, because with generic batteries they might not be properly configured in a way that even when you disconnect the the the, the cable you might still get power flowing to 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 the machine okay so that is said um, we see that it's a bit of a, we have quite a bit of dust around it that is standard uh, so what we want to do is there are three measurements we're going to make first thing we will first thing we're going to do is we're going to see if we have a short on our pp bus line we are going to use uh, this fuse here now after that we are going to check to see if we have a short on our 2.5 volt line on the right hand side using uh, this inductor here now the 2.5 volt line on this machine there are two uh, you have on your right and then you have on your left so with the with the one on the right we can use any of uh, 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 either the inductor here or the capacitor here now on the one on the left we are going to use this capacitor or that capacitor so let's uh, so that the first thing we do before we continue so we are going to use a, a small multimeter and obviously because it's quite loud so we like to use it the multimeter is going to be set to continuity mode now, if I join my probe, we should get a beep and the sound. So that tells me that the probe are equal, correct? So what we are going to do now is if we have, um, if we have, we can use any of our screw hole, uh, that. And then if we, let's say we try any other screw hole, let's say this screw hole, if it beeps, obviously it means that we are measuring on the same platform. Now, 
to say that we have a short two ground, we are current, we are just we are saying that whatever we are going to measure now, it's having a path to ground, it's connected to ground when it's not supposed to do so. Now a fuse is not to be to be connected. It's if if that beeps, then it means that we have a short on our PP bus line. So let's check, let's try try that. Okay, um, it's good. We don't have a short, and then uh, the value that we get is also very high. Now on the on this on the right hand side on the two point five volt line, that is good. We don't have a short on the two point five volt line on the on the right. Then on the left, we can use uh, this capacitors here. So same thing, black probe on ground, and then red probe. We also don't have a short. There, okay, that's good. So the next thing we now want to do is now that we've confirmed that we don't have a short on our PP boss line, we don't have a short on, on either of the 2.5 line. The next thing we want to do is we want to now connect uh, power to to the device to see what uh, what we get. <coughs> <coughs> now we are using a 96 watts charger. So uh, with a 96 watts charger, you don't have to have the battery connected for it to start. But if you have a lower wattage, then you need to have the battery connected in order for if we to have enough power for, for the device. So it's standard for the fan to start to roll once, even though along the line it stops. But it's standard once the device is starting for the fans uh, to when the device goes into a state for the fans to respond. Now that the fans are not responding, we want to see what is it that we have on our PP bus line. If we get 12.6, it means that we have PPDC in voltage is, is up and running. But if we get uh 12.3, it means that we have five volt on our PPDC in line so let's see what we have on our pp bus it's fluctuating so if it's fluctuating it means that the fluctuation is going to come from where from the, from the ppdc in so let's not waste time let's quickly take the board out because the fact that it's fluctuating it means that what we have uh, we have an issue on our ppdc in line so we are now going to quickly take the board out because of time is almost time for setup we want to see what is happening on, uh, on on the PPDC in line. So, so the reason why we are concluding that is because we have a fluctuating uh, voltage. If it was stable, then we wouldn't worry. Okay, uh, and then that uh, then uh, when you are putting this together, by the way, make sure that the inside of the device is properly cleaned and correct, including the fans. And again, if this is the first time you're doing this, be aware that the screws are not all the same. Uh, it's very important that you know what comes out of where, the size um, and the, the location of the screws is very important. So if uh, this is the first time you're doing this, understand that the screws are not all the same. So you don't just, uh, you don't just put a screw somewhere because it fits for you. And then you feel like, okay, if it fits, then it should be there. No. There is a system uh, in place that you have to follow in terms of uh, putting the screws where they are supposed to be. So first thing I'm using, I'm using a T5, a, a T4. So depending on uh, <coughs> the screw sets, uh, the screwdriver sets that you have, uh, this might be a T3 for you. But in my case, I'm using a T4. Okay, so as that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a T5 now. Also, take note of the battery. Uh, the battery screw is quite long compared to um, the newer, the older machines. This is the only battery screw for, uh, this is uh, of the longest battery screw you find on the newer devices. The Apple had a similar de the design in terms of the battery management, uh, the battery screw management with the A2145. No, it is that uh, A21, I don't remember the model number. My head is kind of full now, but that's it. The first Retina um, A2145. Uh, nah, I don't remember. So it's a 13 inches uh, MacBook Pro for 2012, 2013 that Apple. Um, Retina, the, the one that Apple did in 2012-2013. I think it's 2145, I'm not sure. Just going to confirm that. Uh, 
why I have it here. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I just uh, I figured that one out later, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, my head, it's uh, okay. I think it's eight twenty one forty five. Twenty one, uh, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure now. Okay, so screws are out. Uh, we have one screw still there. Okay, well, screws are out. The next thing we're going to do is to take the board out. While you're doing this, uh, be sure that you don't have any type of resistance. If you do, uh, manually remove the cables or whatever it is that is causing the board to stay behind. Okay, so as uh, board is out, so put the shell on the side and figure out what is it that we are dealing with. Okay, let's flip the board on the other side. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. Visual inspection, let's test the board out. Okay, so we know that um, we we were getting, uh, so the, the, the we, PP boss was fluctuating, and we said that's the case because PPDC in is fluctuating. That will, that's, that's the only explanation why PP boss will fluctuate. Um, so, uh, so let's uh, again try it out. We show that we are still in the same page. So we, we have our charger connected. We have our black probe now to ground. This is a, a, a multimeter is now set to voltage mode. Uh, we set the voltage to 200. We can just put it back to, and that's because of, um, yeah, let's put it back to 20. Okay, black probe on ground and then a red probe. PP, let's see what we have in our PPDC in. Uh, sorry, PP bus. So we still have the same thing, still fluctuating. That's fine. So that will be because uh, we should be getting a fluctuation also. You see that? So PPDC is also fluctuating. So that's fine. Now, before we continue, we had a similar issue like this one, correct? Uh, where we had where we had a, a PPDC in fluctuating, and then uh, so what we what we needed to do was to confirm that 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 is something that is uh, uh, that is applicable to all the yeah, so let's see if, if that happens across all. So we check this one. Let's check the second one, correct? See if we have the same behavior across. Same thing, correct? Okay, now let's check the, let's check this other side. Same thing, and then this side as well. I have the same thing. Okay, so the other one that when we had the issue like this one, you remember what the issue was? Uh, we had a short on uh, what line again? The clock line, the IOTC line. PP3V3 underscore IOTC. You forgot. Accessibility shortcuts, 22 items, voice guide, off. Okay, so um, we had a similar issue, um, and the problem we, 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 we fixed on that one was we had a short on the PP3V3 underscore RTC. Now, the fact that we are getting the same behavior across the four ports, we said that that would mean that the blame is not going to be rested on any of the CD3217 because they are behaving all the same way. Okay, so if you had uh, any that behaves um, out of the, 
are out of the pack uh, from the four, then you probably want to blame that one. But the whole four are behaving exactly the same way. And it is close to impossible on, unless there is a physical cause to have the entire four uh, uh, CD32 17s, uh, especially in the way that they are behaving. So now what you want to do is let's see, we're going to check that line, pp 3 v 3 underscore um, ROTC to see if we have a short on that line. So if we do, that would be great because uh, that would kind of save us so much time. Okay, so uh, we can check for the ROTC. So wait, this is, uh, is it? Uh, okay, so ROTC is going to be on this line here. So let's have our black group on ground and then see. And that's good. So we have a short on our ROTC line. So what we what we found on that board, which is exactly similar like this one, was one of you remember one of these guys was shorted correct actually i think i can see what is the problem here you see this guy doesn't look good i'm not sure if you can see that but that doesn't look good that guy that capacitor doesn't look good can you see it ah but i see it okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna yank that off uh okay now i'm a... it looks okay it's not normal but uh okay so this capacitor here this is also sitting on the uh, rotc line so let me show you that one uh if we flip to the other side um so this is the cap here you see that one cb300 is also sitting on rotc line so that cap on the on the p1 of it uh is where it's not looking so good and also, by the way, remember the other six inches that we had, that we had this similar behavior and we had a short on our PP3 V3 ROTC. And then one of, remember what we did was we actually moved this and these two caps, correct? And then we found that one of them was faulty, but we couldn't tell which one of them was faulty. But from this, from this now, we can clearly see that this guy here is not looking good. So let's remove that and see if that solves our problem. And that would be great if it solves our problem. I mean, it saves us a whole lot of uh, time. Okay, that's out. So what you're going to do is we want to read across that capacitor to see if the capacitor beeps. If it beeps, it means that was our problem. If it didn't beep, then that's not our problem. Okay, so let's read across the capacitor itself. And it doesn't beep. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, it could also be that we don't have a we not we don't have a pad on the other side for it to beep. But not to worry. Let's see. Do we still have a short there? If not, we then we are to go to the other side. Let's see. Do you have a short on the line? We still have a short on the line. So that's not our problem. Now let's remove the other one. Interesting, because that one actually looked like the the problem uh, because of the way it looks. But uh, let's remove the other one. Okay. And then it's out and let's see do we is that one gonna beep please beep okay and that did not beep okay so the first the other one we had we had a issue here around these capacitors uh, but uh, apparently we not um, lucky this time in terms of let's just check okay we still have a short okay but definitely we can confirm that it has nothing to do with the cds we think so but uh, yeah, let's put, uh, let's, put, let's put this back. And then we are going to also check the capacitors on the other side of the, on the other side of the CD3217. Okay, and then let's get a, let's replace that one because that doesn't look good. Even if it doesn't fail now, chances are that it's going to fail later. So let's replace that. <clears throat> okay, that's in place. Now let's go to the other side, the CD thirty two. Okay, let's kind of observe this side of the board. Let's see if anything stand out. You remember the other time we also we also faulted that guy, do you remember? But then when we removed it, it was not a problem. But you see the way it's still looking here. It always looks suspicious, but you remove it. I don't know. This side, this is where this is the, the voltage side. That's gonna be ground. 
So usually the voting side will attract more corrosion. Do you understand? So that's going to be... So let's just remove it, even though... Remember, on the, uh, there's another one we see here. Now, that guy looks super suspicious. Now, what is that guy? Let's see what that guy is. You see that guy? That looks like too suspicious. Let's see what is that. Um, okay, unfortunately, that could be a problem because that is a subreal of, um, is it? Nah, not it. Oh, wait, it could be a subreal because, let's see, on the other side of the board, yeah, it's a subreal of RTC. You understand? You see where it became a subreal through R5600, a current sensor resistor? Yeah? Yeah, so let's remove that because that looks super suspicious. Like, suspicious, uh, you can just do that. Yeah, that, I mean, you can see that, yeah, that, that doesn't look good. So let's uh, see now if we have a RTC short gone. Alhamdulillah, that was a problem. <laughs> yeah, but that looks like too suspicious. I mean, you could tell that that doesn't look good. So that's it. You see that now the short is gone. So that guy, that capacitor is, uh, is connected to our ROTC line through R5600. So ROTC line is, is here. You have a current sensor resistor. So pin 1 is going to be equal to pin 2. PP3, V3, and Dasco G3H is connected to that cap on the other side. And that guy was looking all 40, 40. This guy here, C9500. We are not going to put that back. Uh, we don't have to put that back. We're not going to put it back. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it. Uh, our problem is now addressed and resolved. Uh, so we just want to remove this other guy that we say always looks suspicious, even though it never turns out to be the issue. Uh, this guy. So let's remove it. Uh, just because uh, even if uh, it doesn't, even if it doesn't fail now, chances are that it's going to fail in future. It's uh, high. So let's remove it. I don't want to have so much heat in that section of the board, so I'm going to use a, so I use that to remove it, but I'm going to use a, a hot air to replace it. See, we have the exact same problem that we had in the other one, but the, pro the solution was not. <laughs> Imagine if you kind of like want to want to apply the same method of uh, like. Okay, so yeah, it's interesting. So let's just put that back. Is getting on the way, this guy here. Okay, we need to flip this the other way, otherwise, uh, we will not be able to. And obviously, you be careful around here, you don't want to heat up your, your LAN chip. Okay, that's it. That's uh, done. So, alhamdulillah, we have a machine uh, that should fix the problem. The two guys that, that I thought, oh, maybe it's going to be, because, I mean, last time we were here and our problem was solved, so I came back to the same. <laughs> Hoping that, uh, and uh, there was also a capacitor that was looking all suspicious, but turns out he's not the guy.
Okay, so, um, and by the way, yourself, whenever you're working on these devices, especially 15 inches, make sure you always dust both uh, sides, inside and on the actual board, because uh, those are where you would uh, get uh, the build up of uh, dust and then. Okay, so we know we were getting a fluctuating voltage before, so let's try that again. Most likely we should have a stable voltage and we should have a working machine now. Uh, Insha'Allah, that should be the case. Uh, let's have the charger connected. Now we have our multimeter set to vo uh, voltage mode, uh, V, and uh, black probe is on ground, and then red probe, uh, let's see what do we have. Now we have a stable 12.6, and if you check our PPDC in 9, we should have 20 volt, but uh, a little above 20 volt, we set it to 200 volt, and then we try again. 20 volt. Okay, so um, the RTC line, it's definitely, it's a, it's a requirement for your PPDC in, uh, to, um, for your PPDC in voltage to basically boost from 5 volt to 20 volt. Now, because that was the present, that was why we were getting 5 volt and it was uh, fluctuated. And what it was doing, it is trying to obviously do its thing, but but there's a short on the, on, on the clock line and it wasn't doing what it's supposed to do. So now we, the short has been resolved and now we have a working board. So I'm just going to quickly test the board uh, for you guys to see that, yes, we have a, a functional board. And uh, Shahid is going to uh, finalize the job. I'm also not going to... Okay, so he likes me to, to do the dusting <laughs> so he doesn't have to take the word out for the second time. Um, okay, so let's help him do that. You want to make sure you to dust the internals of the machine. This goes. Huh? And when you're taking them out, you be careful because sometimes it might it might put a hole on the speaker, which would then cause the speaker to have a distorted sound. Okay, I've done what you want me to do, correct? Okay, so you don't have to take the board out for the second time. When you are using your trees around the, your battery, be very careful not to point a hole on the battery here. Because that will just end your battery cell. Okay, so we're only going to connect minimal cables uh, because we just want to test to see that it's working. The rest is going to be okay. Uh, open that. We don't really need it. We don't, we don't really need it, but uh, it is going to be connected. Um, this cable here. Okay. Let's connect the people. Charging port, I think that's enough okay, for the sake of time. <clears throat> the fans, okay, let's uh, have at least uh, let's have the fans connected and uh, let's have uh, nah, there's no need to have the speaker connected. Okay, at least one. Okay, let's have it. Charger is connected. See if we get a 
define spin. So define to spin, immediately you get uh, the device to go into SO state and the device restarting. The fan should also spin. Okay, that's a good sign. You should be expecting. That's a beautiful dong. And uh, let's see. And there, uh, that's it. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, I will see you guys in the next one. This is a completed repair.